Are you in the midst of a credit card crisis and a financial meltdown? Up next on Real Life. Well, it's no secret that Americans love to buy and love to borrow to buy. And with mortgage interest rates still at historical lows and many auto loans being offered at 0% interest, it's no wonder we continue to ring up sales. Still, the stock market is down, people are getting laid off, and many of us taking personal stock are not happy with the amount we owe and monthly payments that hurt. When we mail them today, credit card guru Scott Bilker is with us to help you get debt smart. As we go to break, viewers, do you owe more than you can handle? We'll take your calls right after these messages. Debt versus income. According to Business Week Online, the amount that Americans owe on loans for houses, cars, credit cards, and other purchases adds up to nearly 100% of their annual income after taxes. That is up from 75% in 1992 after the last recession ended. That's a lot of credit spending, and it's no surprise with the state of our economy today. Welcome back to Real Life. If you need to buy on credit, and you are getting concerned about your debt, we've got help here for you today. I'm joined by Scott Bilker of DebtSmart.com. He is the author of the new book, Credit Card and Debt Smart. Scott, you've brought some books to give away to our callers. We want to thank you for that. First four callers who ask for the book will receive a free copy of Scott's new book. How are you doing? Great. Thanks for having me on your show again. Well, it's always great being here. Well, you know, we love to talk about this. And it, the, these, the debt ratio for most Americans is really It's really crazy. high. It's climbing, too. I mean, in July, we saw like an $11 billion increase to $1.7 trillion. In trillions and trillions of dollars. Right. And, and more than half of that's in revolving debt. So it's really starting to affect everyone's day-to-day -day living. Uh, mm -hmm. The amount of debt that they carry and the cost of, the de of that debt, because at those high at, at high rates, because not everyone gets a great rate at the high rates, is really expensive. Right, and we should go over some of your basic ideas about how to proceed. A lot of us have credit cards, maybe we've had for a long time, that have rates on them of 17 to 20 percent. Meanwhile, we are getting all these offers in the mail every day, 0% on whatever you transfer or 2% for six months. What do you think about when you get those things? You get, a, you get them all. And you, of course, have a slew of credit cards that you don't use. But, right. but what, what do you feel people should do when they get these offers? Don't throw them away. Right. You don't want to throw those offers away because they're a big opportunity to save a lot of money catalog those offers, write them down, especially the ones from your current credit card banks, because that's where you always get the best deal. They're the ones that are going to give you a 0% deal. In fact, I have four credit cards over the last year uh -huh. that gave me 0%, absolute zero. I actually took that money, put it in a money market account for the year, and just let it earn interest at 3%. Okay, so you, you borrowed money in the cards. Is, yep. is this correct? You borrowed cash. Total cash. And you put it into a money market account. <laughs> right. I didn't spend it. Now, yeah, you right. know, that's I, good. I'm not advising people to do that. I'm doing it to see if the banks are really going to give me a 0% or if there's any kind of trick involved, any kind of extra fee, because sometimes there are. Uh, little things in a fine print. I mean, yeah. as much as I try to read it all, sometimes they get one by on me. But right. in, in this case, I got it all, and I got it at three. I made three percent, and I just paid them back actually recently. Wow! I wanted to tell you about my own little credit card adventure, um, which I didn't act on, and I should have. I know you would have said, "Bad girl." I had a credit card. I, I only use three credit cards. I use my American Express. I have a Chase Visa, and I have a Citibank Mastercard. So um, I've really been trying to limit myself to the American Express because that's paid off every month. Um, and I never activated my Citibank MasterCard, mm. which I used to use a lot last year. But just for some reason, I didn't activate it. Um, and two months after the activation period you know, was over, I got a letter from them. And they said, if you activate by October 7th, we'll give you a 5% interest rate. 
Wow, that's really good. I've and never that heard was that. From my, that was from, uh, you know, I have a high rate on that card, but I just never activate, and I, I missed my deadline. Maybe they'll send me something with an even lower rate, but but yeah. Oh, I, I would bet that that's still going to stand. You know, every day I hear something really good. That's a really good story. I never, uh, I've never heard that one. Yeah. You know, I hear some that are good and some that are not so good. Like today I heard one, uh, someone told me that they, they were at their max on their credit card, mm -hmm. and then it was the time for their annual fee, right? So the bank charged them the annual fee, which put them over their limit. Ooh. So then they charged them an over lim an over limit fee. So what do you do when when something like that happens? Well, in that case, I told this girl. I said, "Look, how long have you had the car?" She said, five years." That's a long time. And she's never been late. So I said, "Call that bank and tell them. Listen, you want to charge me those fees? They're the last fees you will ever charge me because I've got other credit options." And she does. She has some zero uh, balance cards. I yeah. told her, "Transfer your balance. You got to punish them. That you can't let them get away with that. Uh huh. You know, charging you the annual fee and then." Their fee oh. charge causes you to go over the limit. They oh, charge an that, over limit fee. That is fee. low. Anyway, we've got a caller on the line. Uh, Jacqueline, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you today? Oh, fine. How's your credit card crisis? Well, uh, the reason I was calling is I do have a couple credit cards, and the interest rate, you know, the introductory rates are low in the beginning, and again, they grow over a period of time. I was interested in not being a homeowner. If the best way to uh, the best way to lower the interest rates on the credit card would be to negotiate directly with the credit card company, or would you recommend doing a consolidation loan? Well, it depends payment? on how's your history been with those credit cards? Excellent. Oh, well, then you could definitely negotiate with them. If you have two, you said you had two cards? Yes. Okay, great. Call the first one and say, look, uh, if you give me a good rate, I'll use you. Otherwise, I'll be making another phone call in about two seconds. Okay. You know, you really, you know, you don't have to be mean to them. Just let them know the deal, which is that if they want to make something, they will give you a better deal. Otherwise, they're going to make nothing. And I do this all the time, and I have a very high success rate at it. And if you have good credit, which it sounds like you do, and you have these great uh, deals, you, you should take advantage and really make them fight for each other because the only way the banks can get us to get a good customer like you is to steal you from someone else. And they all know it, and, and that's the only thing they can do. So make them work for the money. Now, you can do this with the first person you get on the line? Are, are they authorized to do these things? You know, many times, yes, the first person can help you. But sometimes you're going to have to ask to speak to their supervisor. And maybe even in a different department, but it doesn't matter. Because, you know, if you really truly have options, if you really can call other banks, if you really do have other offers, then you'll be able to just punish them. You know, they don't do it, yeah, you, you punish them a little. And once you pay them off, they'll immediately send you a letter giving you a better deal, just like what happened with you with, you know, you didn't activate. The, I know, that was, that was amazing to oh, me. Oh, they're begging for your business. They're uh, like, they, well, come I've, back. I've had that credit card for a long time, but I just never activated it. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the top ten reasons that you might love and hate your bank. Some of them are these crazy high interest rates. Oh, yes. Right? Oh, yeah, they're out, they're out of hand. I've seen... It, initial offers for credit cards with rates as high as 35 percent. Wow. Is, is that just for the market that can't get a regular credit card? I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I, uh, this, this, like usury. this <laughs> offer came to a friend of mine. He's got good credit. Yeah. So, you know, what, I don't what know. What were they thinking? <laughs> okay. Changing the terms with fine print, you talked about that, where it says zero percent in the big bold lettering on the envelope, right. but inside there's some other little wacky factor, what might some of those wacky factors be? Well, or they're going to send you, they'll change your terms with a negative response. That's where they say, look, we're going to be able to, say, uh, raise your rate if you don't respond by such a date. Yeah. And right. it's on that little white slip. Right. So you don't respond, so it's like a negative response. Uh -huh. You know, I wish I could sell things like that. Like, if you don't respond, right. I can send you this and charge you. Right. That's almost like the way it is. Okay. Old bait and switch, which is they hook you with one rate, right? Yes, they'll send you a credit offer in the mail. You're right, the, the big bold letters, 0% zero per, zero for six months, 9.9 .9 fixed, $5,000 credit limit, no annual fee. You apply, but what you get is a $500 limit card with a $50 annual fee at 19.8%. I can order this. Okay, we're going to go through very quickly uh, other two uh, pe penalties for being late to other creditors. Oh yeah, that, it's really insane now because what, what a lot of banks are doing is if you're late, not to just- To somebody else. Yes, like you're- And they pick it up on the credit report or whatever. They'll raise your rate. This has happened to many friends of I mine. I know, we've heard about this. Nasty, nasty. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break. Our question to you as we go out, has your credit card debt hurt you when you apply for a loan? Give us a call. We'll be right back.
coming up on Real Life on Wednesday, we'll have another installment of our ongoing series on alternative health, anti-aging therapy. We will talk about human growth hormone and other agents used in keeping us looking and feeling younger. On Thursday, planning a wedding. As young girls, we all fantasize about our dream weddings. We grow up, we get engaged, and reality slaps us in the face when we start planning that wedding. Our expert guest will take your calls on planning your reception. Welcome back to Real Life. Our topic today, avoiding a credit card crisis. My guest is Scott Bilker of the website www debtsmart.com, author of the book, Credit Card and Debt Management. Scott, before we go back to the phones, I want to let our viewers know about a special offer just for you guys. If you log on to www.debtsmart.com slash CN8 and purchase your Debt Smart basic package, that's your two books and no bills CD-ROM, you will get for free a copy of your low interest rate special report. Okay, that's what you do if you go on to DebtSmart.com. Remember the slash CN8. Okay, we're going to go to the phone, Scott, we have on the line with us. Carol. Yes, Carol. Hi. Hi. I am so happy that I finally got through. I have um, a few issues. First, I want to say that I am a breast cancer patient, and I have been out of work for a year, okay? I have a situation where a, an attorney for a hospital erroneous, erron, erroneously put, filed a judgment when the insurance company had already paid for the service that was provided. And I need, I need to know how I can go about getting that negative information off of my credit report. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? D when do you have proof, Carol, that they paid? Excuse, they had been, I have proof the explanation of benefits from the okay. insurance company, which I will not name. Okay, okay. So, okay, so you have the proof that it was paid? Yes. Okay, and now it's on your credit report? Is that on the problem? On my credit report as a judgment. There is a judgment against me. And okay, did you, did you dispute that judgment with the credit reporting okay. agency? That is my, that's my next question. Yes, definitely. Send that, I should send in the, ex, the explanation of benefits, mm -hmm. but how do I go about getting it off the civil record in my town. Hmm, the civil in the record. Township, at the actual judge judgment in the courthouse. Now, have you have you talked to the law lawyer who filed this judgment? I have tried to talk to these people, and I have told I have faxed them copies yeah. of the EOB, the the insurance company. I might as well say it is Prudential. And, Prudential uh, has sent them copies, right? And they still went to court. They said, we're not going to go to court. And they still went to court and filed a judgment against me. And they won. Okay? And they've been paid. That means they've, they've been paid not once, but twice. Okay? Okay. okay. It sounds to me, this is something, unfortunately, it sounds like you could use a lawyer for. Is it a small claim? How much is it? This, we're talking, it's like, it's the, the actual bill was $109 hmm. for a pulmonary test. Yeah. But the judgment and the fees are over seven hundred dollars and I right. refuse to pay them. You know, Carol, you definitely should speak to an attorney about that, uh, all the legal issues, but as far as your credit history goes and your credit report, contact your credit reporting agency and you can give them your proof and they'll have to investigate it and if they can't show that it's a valid charge, then they'll have to remove it. Okay. So at least you could do that. We wish you the best of luck. Uh, Kelly, you're up. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a comment slash question. I have a lot of credit cards. Okay. And I tried to do a debt consolidation loan with my credit union, but my debt ratio is too high. It's not a problem with my credit. My credit's fine. I just want to consolidate everything down in one bill, and I can't seem to do that because, like I said, my debt ratio is too high. Okay. What, what are the rates on your current debts? What are the rates? Yeah. They go anywhere from 14.88 to 21.9. Okay. Do you own a home? No, I don't. Okay, so you have a. And how much debt are we talking about, Kelly? Uh, it's about twelve thousand. Okay. Credit cards. Okay, so uh, have That's you talked to your like individual system. credit card banks? I'm sorry. Have you talked to your individual credit card banks about either 
having them give you a, an increased line of credit and transferring balances onto fewer cards at a better rate? No, I haven't done that yet. And my reason is this, I wanted to ask you. Is that something if you call your credit card companies and they, if they agree to lower your interest rate, or is that something that reports negatively on your credit report? Absolutely does not report no. negatively. It's, okay. it's totally to your benefit. Give one a call and say, here's the story. Okay. Raise my credit limit and I will transfer some money over to you today, but I want my credit limit raised and I want you to lower my rate and I'm gonna be calling all my other banks too. First one to do it, getting my money. Other ones, will get nothing. Okay, um, the second thing is, if that doesn't work, <laughs> which I hope it will, but if that doesn't work, if I go through like a credit counseling agency, uh -huh. is that something that would report negatively if, if I consolidate everything and pay you know, the creditors X amount of dollars each month. Is yes, that many, that ma many times banks are going to report that you're working with a credit counselor. Now, all credit counselors are not equal. In fact, I just started to, uh, to screen some, so that way if I do ever recommend any, which now I, I will, um, that they're totally clear because if you check like the Better Business Bureau online at bbb.org, you want to make sure that they have a clean history. If you want you can log into my website at debtsmart.com slash help center and I've got a little form for you to fill out and I'll pass that along to the people I'm working with and they can give you a call and then just to discuss your options you know no matter who calls you or who recommends anything you evaluate everything you know on an individual basis but yes when you work with a credit counselor it can report negatively on your credit yeah, history. That's true. Okay Kelly we wish you the best of luck we're gonna go to April. Hi April. Yes hello how you doing yeah, today? Fine thanks. I'm because um, I was fortunate enough to buy a house uh, a couple years ago and uh, everything one thing led to another and I was able to get <laughs> a large amount of credit cards now that I'm looking at things I want to be able to step back and to get rid of them I've called and I canceled a couple of them um, it's just that it's a lot now what's the because I haven't I had a nice credit rating okay. what can I do to get back on track okay so you bought a house you have some credit cards you're trying to pay them off and close all your accounts? Yeah, I, can, I, call, I, count, I canceled a couple of them. But do you have balances on the ones you've canceled? Yes. Uh, it's not really good. Although they might be canceled, it still shows that you owe the money. Until it's actually paid off, it's still going to be on your credit report. Uh, what are the rates of the ones you currently have? They were like, uh, probably like 12. Okay, so that's not so bad. I would say my personal opinion is to not be too hasty in canceling these accounts only because you can use them to fight for your business even if one goes to zero balance wise you owe nothing and you owe something on another card you can call the one with the zero balance and see if they'll give you a better deal today more than ever the banks are begging for our business and just as mary mentioned a second ago of how when her, she didn't activate her card they called an offer of five percent which is a great rate you know by having your accounts open and just not spending them not using them you're going to be able to make them uh, give you better deals and eventually pay it off to zero and then you can do your master plan and just wipe them out Okay, we wish you the best of luck, April. We're going to take a quick break. We will be back to wrap up. Take as many of your calls as we can right after these messages. Next time on Real Life, we'll have another installment of our ongoing series on alternative health, anti-aging therapy. We will talk about human growth hormone and other agents used in keeping us looking and feeling younger. That's next time. Welcome back to Real Life. We are wrapping up our topic today, avoiding a credit card crisis with uh, Scott Bilker, author of the Debt Smart email newsletter, which you can subscribe to at his website, www.debtsmart.com. Okay. Hey, Scott, we're going to go to our, back to our phones. Bill, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Okay, tell, me, tell us your problem. I have a question. Um, I, a few months ago, actually about a year and a half ago, my wife and I got married. We bought a new house. And shortly after that, we decided to consolidate both of our credit cards and use a credit um, counseling company. Okay. At this, we just tried to refinance um, our house, and our rating wasn't good enough to get a new refinance. Okay. We're now at the point where do we continue on with the credit counseling company or do we go ahead and call the individual companies ourselves and try to do it on our own? Well, the, is the reason, Bill, that you got rejected for this refinance because you were using credit counseling? It was one, of, one, of the, one of the credit cards is getting paid late by the counseling company. The counselor's paying late? Yes. 
and we've tried to we've tried to remedy that by oh, calling them. They're gone. I mean, it's time to be finished with them. I think they should not be paying late. I mean, that's the, their job is to pay on time. And I and I understand that. But however, does going with a company like this mm -hmm. hurt you as compared to going it on your own? Well, certainly in this case, definitely go go it on your own. Again, if you go to my website and go to debtsmart.com slash help center, I can refer refer you to someone who I I think is good, who I trust. And uh, uh, but you should definitely call th those companies and see if you can do it yourself. I always recommend trying to do it yourself. First step, call them, see if you can do it yourself, and, try to do it. And and don't you think it, that Bill has to clarify to uh, the people to whom he owes debt that it's not his fault the card's being paid late? That's true. I mean, he can clarify that, but ultimately it's still his responsibility because yeah, they don't right. really take control of it. And uh, this has happened to other people I know. In fact, a wow. friend of mine wrote an article on my website about that, the trouble he's had with his, his credit counseling company. Okay. He, he fired him for the same reason. Time to go it on your own. Okay, we wish you the best of luck. We're going to go next to Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Hi, how are you? Fine, thanks. What's your issue? Um, I have a question. It's it's related to credit cards, but it's it's more focusing on um, student loans. Okay. And um, I was recently laid off in December and took a series of temp jobs, and I wasn't able to pay my student loans. Okay. So I requested um, um, a forbearance and where I can defer them. Right. So I filled out the paperwork in March to defer them, mm -hmm. and they finally went through approval, and I'm going to resume payments um, in June of 2003. Okay, great. So that I can get back on my feet. Now, the problem is, is that the lender that I went through didn't tell me that the state is a whole separate issue. The loans that were taken out with um, the state of New Jersey mm -hmm. are totally different than what was taken out with Citibank. So okay. now I'm like over 90 to 120 days past due on all of my state loans. Okay, you thought they'd all be consolidated. I thought it was all together. Okay. I didn't know that it was separate until I'm getting notices from the state of New Jersey that I'm defaulting and I need to clear this up with my lender. Okay, did, did you contact them? I, I sent them, I sent them um, a fax yesterday okay. with, you know, the documentation for my, my city assist and my city loans. Um, but I just want to know how my credit rating is affected now when it was kind of their fault indirectly. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, of course, their argument is going to be that, you know, because they were your loans, they're going to say it was your fault. But, you know, I, I, I'm with you. They should have let you know right away since they knew about all your loans, the fact that you should have contacted the state. They should have really advised you about that. But now that that's over, those late payments are definitely going to affect you in a negative way. However, maybe you could talk to the state, those people, explain it to them, and maybe they'll remove them. I mean, it's possible. You can ask. You could say, look, I'll clear it up. I'll make the payments. I didn't mean to be late. It was an accident. Can you do something with my credit? credit report. Can you make it better? Okay. Very quickly, I think we've got Nirvana on the line. Hi. Hi, this is Levon. Um, yeah, very quickly. Okay. I have a, a lot of credit cards on my credit report. Zero balances, but they're open lines. Do I close those accounts? I thought it was always good to have them on there, but now they're telling me I have a high credit to debt ratio because of the amount of a line of credit against each card. Okay. Because of what you have available but haven't used. Very interesting question. Yes. About 30 seconds to black. Okay, you have no, if you, if you have no uh, balances, then you might want to close these if you're going to get a house. But if you don't really need to get a loan or use your credit report to get any new loans, then it won't hurt you. Okay, but if, if you are planning to go out and seek a mortgage... Yes, then you should close those accounts. Okay, so that you are debt smart in right. preparation. Well, Scott, it's been great as usual. We appreciate all of our callers' questions. See ya.